Sonic Adventure 2 is really a much more streamlined game than Adventure 1. You've got Sonic and Shadow with their high-speed action, Tails and Eggman with their lock-on shooter stages, and lastly, Knuckles and Rouge with their treasure hunting. I especially like the latter half of the game where the hero side and dark side converge and the characters team up for that final stage. It's an action game, but I think that especially in that latter half, it has a really dramatic story. Back in Adventure 1, there were all sorts of things I wished I could have done, and when we made Adventure 2, I was finally able to put them in there. We wanted to add a game element that fans would want to come back and play again and again. So that's why we implemented the whole Chow system. The Chow are these creatures that evolve as you progress through the game. They undergo changes like they'll grow wings or become a lot faster, and so the initial base Chow can't have any special characteristics that make it stand out in any way. Personally, I'm not all that good when it comes to coming up with things that are cute and cuddly. But one of the female artists on my team came up with some ideas to fit what we needed. She's presenting the ideas to us. At that point, none of us could really tell if they were appealing or not. All we said was, oh, okay. But once we put it all together, and you could see them moving around on the screen and coming to life, I thought, yeah, that's good. I don't know if this is something we've ever told anyone, but back when we were working on Sonic Adventure 2, we were living in San Francisco. So we had cars, but sometimes we'd get a little careless, and every so often we'd get hit with parking tickets. And they were what, about $30 or so? Anyhow, there were these little cars that would go around passing out the parking tickets. And these people were just doing their job. But still, every single time we'd get a parking ticket, we'd be thinking, ah, there goes another 30 bucks. So, in one of the stages of the game, this little car shows up, and Sonic can attack it and just destroy it. It's like, all right, revenge. We were doing little things like that. <laughs> Back in the Genesis days, there wasn't really a lot of communication going back and forth between the development teams that were in Japan and the marketing teams that were in the US or Europe. Sonic as a character has had something about him that's more Western than Japanese. It actually wasn't very rare for us to find out after the fact that the names of characters or other things had been changed to something completely different. and. Back on the Genesis, the only change had been that Dr. Eggman had become Dr. Robotnik. With Sonic Adventure, for the first time in the series, we had voiceover and the ability to tell more of a story within the game itself. And so we figured, well, let's take advantage of this opportunity to fix this whole Dr. Robotnik thing. The way we did it was we essentially told the audience, Okay, his name is Dr. Robotnik, and that hasn't changed. But Dr. Eggman is a nickname that the other characters call him. Dr. Eggman is an engineering genius who develops all sorts of robots with a wide range of functionality. And designing each of those was really fun. In the end, though, his creations always get destroyed by Sonic. You've got the whole boom, 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 boom. And after his device falls apart, he's left in that last machine of his, the little egg-shaped craft. In the end, that's the only thing that ever keeps him safe. So he takes all these ideas and puts all this money and effort and whatnot into making some new contraption. And Sonic still always just destroys it in the end. And so Eggman comes out in that little machine again, like it's a symbol of his persistence. No matter how many times he's defeated, he puts it behind him. He doesn't give up. He just runs off going curses and heads off to fight Sonic another day. <laughs>